I'm Scott. I design, build, and repair woodworking pieces. I'm opening up the doors to my shop to help you become a better woodworker. My wife and I decided to renovate our staircase. We had gold and oak handrails and spindles and really worn out carpet. We've decided to close in the stair stringers, beef up the newel posts, add some wainscoting, and paint it all out to give it a more traditional look. This renovation is going to take a few episodes, so please stay tuned. I started off doing the new post work and having a little bit of fun. If you've seen Christmas Vacation, you'll understand my reference here, my best Chevy Chase impression. We don't like our golden oak new posts. We went out and shopped and looked for new options, but we realized how expensive it was to replace them all. They were strong and sturdy, so we decided to wrap material around the existing posts instead. The cost of the birch and trim to cover these seven newel posts was the same cost as buying a larger newel post, so this was the affordable solution. Now let's head out to the wood shop and get started. I've decided to build these boxes with mitered corners, that way concealing all the joints. But before I can do that, I need to make sure my table saw is set up accurately and that those 45 degree corners are going to work when I glue them up. Now with all my test pieces cut, what I'm going to do is put them together and see how well they fit. So this is just a dry fit, I'm not going to glue it at all. And the best tool for this is a strap clamp. And what that does is it applies even pressure across all four pieces and it allows you to get those corners nice and tight. If you try and use just regular clamps, you'll squeeze one side more than another and gets your joints out of alignment. This just sort of takes it off, takes all the guesswork out of it. So there it's dry fit. And I've got this one piece out of place. Let's try that again. So there you can see how tight the joints are, and that means I've got my miter set perfectly on that table saw. And here's a full newel post, glued up and strapped tight. I've now got the new newel posts installed, and I've temporarily put the old railing back on just for safety purposes during this renovation. So this new newel post is that box I was showing in the workshop. Uh, just a column, it's a four inch by four inch column. On the base, I have put three quarter inch material to give me a five and a half inch base. And the column just slid over top of the existing newel post. Here's a view of the newel post from the top. What I've got is the existing newel post in the center and then the box that I built around it for the new newel post. Now because I have an existing stairwell and I needed to align these, I ended up having to plane a few of these pieces before I assembled the boxes to get them to align properly. To dress this up, I've got a few more pieces to add. This is cove molding. So this goes on the base here. I've also got a newel cap and I've purchased these pre-made, meant for a four inch post. And then to dress up this flat area here, I've got astragal molding that will go somewhere around here just to dress up that flat edge. So once I get this all sanded, primed, and painted, it'll give us a nice crisp look and more of that traditional feel that we're looking for. The caps are made up of two different pieces. One is this top here, which is a raised panel design. And the bottom is a cove mold, which gives me this overhang. So it's just a matter of putting these on top to finish off the top piece, and then give me a measurement down to the astragal mold, and I'll finish it off by putting on the cove mold. I now have a lot of astragal molding I need to cut. I have seven newel posts and four pieces on each newel post, so that's 28 pieces. I like to set up repeatable processes, so if I set up a stop block here and cut the pieces exactly the same, I know I'm going to get consistent results. What I do is start by measuring and overestimating the amount that I need and set my saw at 45 degrees. Then what I do is line up my stop block 
to roughly that cut. And I'll go through and I'll make all these cuts on all the parts that gives me excess and it gives me one miter. Then what I need to do is reset that stop block, come back and cut the other miter. And that'll give me 28 pieces exactly the same. I've attached a new post cap here and I've measured down where I think is the appropriate distance to give a nice look here and a balance between the top and bottom section. Then I bring in the astragal molding, which is here. And I try on two pieces on the corner first to check for the length of my trim. And when I put the third one on, I can see if I'm too long or too short. Always making sure I've got a tight joint to start here gives me a good frame of reference. I'm happy with the fit of the first two pieces, so I'm going to install them. And what I do is put a bit of glue right in the middle of the trim, not all the way across it. I allow for some expansion. Hold that in place and get it on that line. Line up my second piece here so I've got a nice fitting joint. That, I, that way I know it's in the right position. And once I've got it on that line, I brad nail it. So with the first one in, add a dab of glue to the joint and to the edge. Hold it in place, line up my other end, and then nail it in place. So I've got two nails in it here, so I know these are fixed points. It just allows me now to work through getting these joints right. So that one I'm happy with, but this one is too long. So I just need to trim that one and then come back and finish it off. With the last piece fit, just a little dab of glue. And here I'm gonna line up this joint where I want it, up to the line. I just nail it on the back end. So this is still moving. Now I'll put a little bit of glue on this end. And line up these pieces. Oops, missed a bit of glue. The reason I glue these miters is just to give them a little extra holding power to encourage them to stay together. Cove molding at the bottom is a lot easier to attach because it's already got a shelf. So it's just a matter of putting on the glue and setting it in place. And then once I've got all these in place, it's just a matter of tweaking it and then nailing it in place. So just easily put these on here.
And then the key part here is looking at it from above because that's the way you're going to see it. Just to make sure all those joints are lined up properly. And then once you're happy with them, it's just a matter of nailing them on. Now, if you don't have a brad nailer, the best thing to do is pre-drill a hole and then drive your finishing nail. To prevent the wood from splitting. If you'd like to remodel some newel posts, here are some keys to success. Use a stop block to make repeatable cuts. Use strap clamps to glue up mitered posts instead of traditional clamps. Lay out astrical trim with a square and pencil to make sure it's level. Glue miter joints on trim to keep them secure. And pre-drill holes if nailing trim on by hand to prevent splitting small pieces of wood. The newel posts are now all ready for priming. I have filled the nail holes and I have broken all the edges so they're nice and smooth. And we're almost halfway through this project. So we've still got a few more things to do. We have railings and pickets to install. We have a lot of painting to do with the wainscoting and all these newel posts. So please stick with us. If you'd like to see notifications of when the next videos come out, please subscribe. In the meantime, enjoy your time in the workshop. In the next episode, we'll cover off how we used an HVLP sprayer to quickly finish off the spindles, newel posts, and wainscoting. We'll also cover the staining process we used for the handrail. This is all in preparation for the final episode where we'll show you the installation of the handrail and the before and after photos. So stay with us. Mm -hmm.